Welcome to EPG Path Shala. I am Shayanton Dashgupta from Jadavpur University. And today, I shall be taking you through the module on South Asian Writings in English, View from the 21st Century. This module is part of the paper on New Literatures in English. In this module, we try and understand what kinds of English language literature has been emerging from South Asia. English is no longer the language only of England. Many people from different countries of the world today write literature in English. We are going to try and understand what themes, what importance English language writing from countries such as India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka have for today's world. South Asian literature written in English enjoys unprecedented visibility across the world today. Many South Asian writers who write in English have become household names. Some of them live in South Asia, some of them are today settled abroad. They are called part of the diaspora. You may be familiar with the names of many such South Asian English language writers. Salman Rushdie, Amitav Ghosh, Champa Lahiri, Kamila Shamsi, G. Narsanayagam, Ramesh Gunasekara, these are some of the names that you might have heard of. They are all writers from South Asia who write primarily in English. South Asian English literature has become commercially successful in recent decades. And this has encouraged more people from South Asia to take up writing in English. And South Asian English language literature is also taught today at many universities across the world. What has been the contribution of South Asian writers who have been writing in English? They have experimented with the English language. They have developed new idioms and registers of the English language. And of course, they have introduced new themes and perspectives to this body of literature that is written in English. When we say South Asia, the question emerges, what is South Asia? Generally, the countries of the Indian subcontinent and its immediate neighbors are taken to constitute South Asia. Sometimes South Asia is taken to mean the Sark group of countries, countries like India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Sri Lanka, Nepal, Afghanistan, and the Maldives. South Asia is a region of amazing diversity. There are thousands of languages in South Asia, some of them very, very ancient. English is one of the relatively newer languages in which literature has been written in this part of the world. The English language came to us in South Asia through colonial contact. The missionaries and the British colonial administration helped spread the English language in South Asia. Many of the colonial administrators based in South Asia wrote about their experiences in their language in English. And later on, many people from South Asia themselves started writing in English. Initially, they mostly wrote non-fiction. But later on, they moved on and tried their hands at other genres as well. The English language served as a kind of lingua franca in South Asia and it helped people who spoke different languages in South Asia to communicate among themselves. But this does not mean that the British rulers wanted to spread the English language with any such altruistic purposes. They wanted to spread the English language for their own purposes in their own interests. We note, for instance, Sir Thomas Babington Macaulay's Minute on Indian Education, which was tabled in February 1835. In his Minute, Macaulay talks about, quote, a class of persons, Indian in blood and color, but English in taste, in opinions, in morals, and in intellect, unquote. What is clear is that Macaulay actually wanted to spread English language education only to create a class of Indians who would rule India on behalf of the British. Do you know who was the first Indian to write in English? 
C. V. Bodia was one of the earliest writers in this tradition. His book, Account of the Jains, was thought to be the earliest extant piece of Indian writing in English for many years. It was completed in 1803 but published only in 1809. This was one of the earliest pieces of writings in this tradition. However, the earliest book in the English language by an Indian is today largely accepted to be a book called The Travels of Deen Muhammad, a native of Patna in Bengal, through several parts of India while in the service of the Honorable East India Company, a rather large name. The Travels of Deen Muhammad, as it is called in brief, was published in 1793. And it is the Ur text in the tradition to which all South Asian English language writers of today may be seen to belong. Deen Muhammad had signed up with the British East India Company Army and he served under Captain Godfrey Baker. When Baker returned to Ireland, Dean Muhammad accompanied him there, settled there, and tried his hand at various businesses. He wrote this book called Travels of Dean Muhammad. South Asian English literature has often been criticized for being out of touch with local South Asian realities and for being too elitist. That may be partly true, but that was not always the case. Even though the language was a foreign language, the realities that worked their way into the literary works in English were sometimes very local and very immediate. None other than Shishir Kumar Dash has mentioned in his book A History of Indian Literature, Volume 8, that much of the Indian English writings produced before 1835 were actually of great relevance to the Indian context and to the Indian society. According to Shishir Kumar Dash, the novel becomes the most influential literary genre in India by the year 1885. The most influential figure among the early Indian novelists was definitely Bonkim Chandru Chattopadhyay. While Bonkim Chandru is remembered for his novels in Bangla, one also notes that Bunkim Chandra's first novel was actually in English. It was called Raj Mohan's Wife and published in 1864. Another very important early Indian English novel was called Govindo Samanta, 1874, which was written by Lal Bihari De. The Indian English novel really begins to make a mark in the 1920s and the 1930s. This is what many scholars, including Minakshi Mukherjee, have opined. The 1930s is a golden period because this decade sees the emergence of the famous triad of Indian English uh, uh, novelists. Mulkaraj Anand, 1905 to 2004, R.K. Narayan, 1909 to 2000, and Raja Rao, 1908 to 2006. All three writers try to depict the quintessentially Indian reality in its different aspects as they write in the English language. They managed to Indianize the English language even as they tried to create a body of Indian English literature. Rao, Narayan and Anand all wrote about the common man and this lent an immediacy and a relevance to their writings. Common themes in this period included social evils, the need for social reform, the caste system, the struggle for independence, the influence of Gandhi and his philosophy. All of these made their mark uh, felt in the realm of Indian English literature. India and Pakistan became independent in 1947 and Sri Lanka followed and emerged as an independent state in 1948. Bangladesh on its part uh, emerged as an independent state in 1971 after fighting against the political, linguistic, economic and military oppression of West Pakistan. At that time it was East Pakistan. Then in 1971 it emerged as an independent state of 
Bangladesh. Now the question is, what happens to English language writing in South Asia after the British leave South Asia? We will see that South Asian English language writing continues to flourish in the states that constitute South Asia after political independence. But the turning point for this tradition of writing is really taken to be 1981. In 1981, Salman Rushdie's Midnight's Children gets the Booker Award. And this is a watershed event because it marks a certain recognition that is accorded to South Asian English language writing. This inspires, encourages many South Asian writers to take up the English language uh, in their literary endeavors. This award was also taken to be a, a recognition of chutnification, a process that is associated with Rashti, who tries to bring in the idiom of Indian languages, of South Asian languages, into the English that he uses for his books. Of course, Rashti is not the first to do this. We must remember G. V. Desani, who had done the same thing, in a way, many decades ago, in his book All About H. Hatter. Many have tried writing histories of English literature emerging from South Asia, but they have generally focused on individual countries. The most important effort in this direction probably came in the post-independence era from K. R. S. Srinivasa Iyengar, who wrote a book called Indian Writing in English. The book has been published in many editions, but the first edition of this book was published in 1962. M. K. Nayak's A History of Indian English Literature, which was published by the Sahitya Academy in 1982, was another very important volume that sought to trace the history of English language writing in India. There have been similar efforts in the contexts of Pakistan and Sri Lanka as well. In Pakistan, Alamgir Hashmi wrote Pakistani Literature, the Contemporary English Writers, which was published in 1978. This is a book that is said to have popularized the label Pakistani Literature in English. Again, Tariq Rahman is another person who wrote A History of Pakistani Literature in English, a book that was published in 1991. This again sought to trace the history of English language writing in Pakistan. Another important figure in the realm of Pakistani English language writing is Muniza Shamsi. Muniza Shamsi has edited several anthologies of Pakistani English writing, starting with the book Dragonfly in the Sun, an anthology of Pakistani writing in English, which was published in 1997. Muniza Shamsi also edited Leaving Home Towards a New Millennium and in recent years she also authored Hybrid Tapestries, the development of Pakistani English literature. In the context of Sri Lanka, DCRA Gunitilake has done much the same thing. Gunitilake edited several anthologies of Sri Lankan English literature that made this genre of writing more visible and more popular. He has also written extensively on English language writing from Sri Lanka in many different international journals and periodicals. From South Asia, it is probably Indian English literature that has been most visible, but Pakistani writing in English has also been steadily on the rise. There are many writers from Pakistan either living there or settled abroad who have published some very powerful works in English. There are many young writers uh, from Pakistan who have already achieved a certain degree of international recognition for the writings that they come out with in English. You may have heard of Babsi Sidwa, the Pakistani origin writer. Perhaps you have read Ice Candy Man, Sidwa's novel. You may also have watched the film 1947 Earth, starring Nandita Das and Amir Khan. This film was made by Deepa Mehta and was based on Babsi Sidwa's novel. 
Babse Sidwa happens to be one of the most, uh, uh, one of the best known Pakistani origin writers who write in the English language today. There is another writer called Sara Suleri, uh, who is also very well known. She's a Pakistani born English language writer, scholar, and her best known work is probably Meatless Days. Among the most popular Pakistani English language writers today are Kamila Shamsi, Amir Hussain, Mohsin Hamid, Talat Abbasi, Azma Aslam Khan, Daniel Muinuddin, Salim Akhtar Dhera, Zulfi Ali Bhutto, etc. Azma Aslam Khan shot to fame with her first novel, which is called The Story of Noble Rot. It was published in 2001. Since then, she has written and published several novels. Another very important writer from Pakistan is Mohsin Hamid, who is author of four novels, Moth Smoke, The Reluctant Fundamentalist, How to Get Filthy Rich in Rising Asia, and Exit West. He is also an essayist, essayist of note. Again, Amir Hussain is a writer of fiction who has spent several short story collections, of which the best known perhaps is called Cactus Town Selected Stories. It was published in 2003. Among the younger Pakistani English language writers, perhaps the most exciting is Kamila Shamsi. Kamila Shamsi's first novel, which is called In the City by the Sea, was published in 1988. The novel deployed Hassan, a child protagonist. In the City by the Sea works effectively on themes of military dictatorship and censorship in Pakistan, impediments to democracy in Pakistan, colonial hangover, and the stark class divide in independent Pakistan. So her novels are clearly related to social, economic, political conditions of contemporary Pakistan. These are themes that recur in many of Kamila Shamsi's later novels as well. Shamsi's third novel, Cartography, which was published in 2002, is quite remarkable. The novel plays around with language. The novel also brings to the fore one of the episodes of Pakistani history over which there has been a curious, if understandable, silence in the realm of Pakistani literature. This is the history of the oppression of East Pakistan by West Pakistan, something that led finally to the partition of Pakistan and the emergence of Bangladesh as an independent state in 1971. The elite background and lifestyles of Zia and his friends in cartography also highlights the divisive potential of the English language in post-colonial Pakistan. Other themes that recur in cartography are political violence, religious sentiments, displacement, etc. etc. Kamila Shamsi is not alone in South Asian literature in English. The English-speaking elite is often seen to be divorced from local realities in South Asian English language writing. The important questions that come up when it comes to South Asian writers who write in English is that since it is only a small percentage of readers in South Asia who read literature in English, many writers perhaps write with an international audience in mind. How does this influence the way they portray their homelands? Do they sometimes tend to portray India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka uh, 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 in ways that are stereotypical perhaps? These are questions that you might like to keep in mind when you study South Asian English language literature. That is as far as India and Pakistan are concerned. What about Bangladesh? Because Bangladesh gained independence uh, based on linguistic nationalism. The Bangla language, recognition of the Bangla language was very important for the independent state of Bangladesh. Do writers write in English from Bangladesh as well? The answer is yes. While Bangla 
definitely continues to be the predominant language of literature in Bangladesh. There is a group of writers from Bangladesh who write in the English language. One of the most important Bangladeshi English language writers is Niaz Zaman. Niaz Zaman has authored um, a collection of short stories in English, which is called The Dance and Other Stories, which was published in 1996. She has also written a novel. Another very important uh, uh, poet from the first generation of Bangladeshi English language writers is Razia Khan Amin. She is remembered for her two anthologies of poetry, Argus Under Anesthesia, 1976, and Cruel April, 1977. One also notes Adib Khan's contribution to the area of Bangladeshi English language fiction. Adib Khan is a diasporic writer who is settled in Australia. His important works include Seasonal Adjustments, 1994, Solitude of Illusions, 1996, The Storyteller, 2000, and so on and so forth. The themes that Khan deals with are those of identity, migration, dislocation. These are all themes that are common to much of the writings of diasporic writers from South Asia who write in the English language. Another writer you may have heard of is Monika Ali. Ali was born in Bangladesh but migrated to the UK. Although she moved to the UK as a child, she is claimed by some uh, within the folds of Bangladeshi English literature. Her first novel, Brick Lane, which was published by 2003, brought her instant literary and media attention and controversy. It focused on the Bangladeshi community in London. Sri Lanka is another South Asian country that has a vibrant English language literary tradition. As we know, the British took over Sri Lanka, which was then called Ceylon, after the Portuguese and the Dutch. And the British were ruling over all of Sri Lanka by 1815. English has remained an important language in Sri Lanka since then. It is one of the three major languages of Sri Lanka, the other two languages being Sinhala and Tamil. The stark divide that, that exists between the haves and the have-nots, which we see in the context of Pakistani English writing, is again something that we also encounter in Sri Lankan English language writing, because this is part and parcel of the post-colonial South Asian realities. The English language has been associated with an elite westernized strand of society which is cut off from the rest of Sri Lanka. And this is a theme that has been explored in great detail in Cinnamon Gardens, which is the second novel to be written by Sham Selvadurai, a diasporic Sri Lankan writer who now lives in Canada. Among the early Sri Lankan English language writers are Lucian de Silva, um, S.J.K. Crowther and H.E. Virasuriya. Punyakante Vijanaike and James Gunavartane were also important for this trajectory and they were pioneers in the field of Sri Lankan English literature. Rajiva Vijasingha, one of the more important critics from Sri Lanka, also identifies Ediravira Sarachandra, writer, dramatist, academic, and Yasmin Guniratne, academic writer, as having played very important roles in fostering Sri Lankan English literature. It is only in the 1980s that Sri Lankan English writing really comes to the forefront in a very big way. And um, sadly enough, this is connected with contemporary historical and political developments in Sri Lanka. The 1980s, as we know, were a uh, was a tempestuous decade in the history of independent Sri Lanka. The ethnic rivalry between the majoritarian Sinhalese and the minority Tamils came to a head at this time during this decade. And this fueled a lot of militancy and, violent and violence and bloodshed in these years. This militancy and state-sponsored 
violence found their way into much of Sri Lankan English literature of this period. Shyam Selvadurai's debut novel, for instance, Funny Boy, which was published in 1994, details the growing up years of R.G., a young boy, and his attempt to negotiate simultaneously uh, with his burgeoning consciousness of his sexuality and his growing understanding of his identity as a mixed Tamil Sinhala child living in a country that is being spilled apart by the Tamil and the Sinhala community's violence. Many of the Sri Lankan English language writers are part of the diaspora. Renze Cruz, Michael Ondatje, Shyam Selvadurai, Ramesh Gunasekara are all part of this group. Much of their writings go back to Sri Lanka and reflect on the social and political contexts of Sri Lanka. Among the resident Sri Lankan English language writers, perhaps the most powerful, among the most powerful are Jean Arsanagam and Karl Muller. Both of them are Burgers of mixed descent and have written fiction and poetry in English. And they are among the best known Sri Lankan English language writers. South Asia has a well-established, well-developed tradition of English language writing by now. English language writers from South Asia have produced literary works which are remarkable for their treatment of contemporary social, of contemporary South Asian realities. They are remarkable for their experiments with the English language and they are remarkable for their treatment of themes of history, displacement and social and political division. South Asian writing in English thus is today one of the most important areas within what is called new literatures in English. And there is a lot of scope for serious research in this area. This is a living contemporary tradition and one looks forward to many more exciting works emerging in the English language from this part of the world. This module is on South Asian writings in English view from the 21st century. And here we look at writings emerging in the English language from countries such as India, Pakistan, Sri Lanka and Bangladesh. English is a literary language today, not just of England, but of many countries across the world. Many people in South Asia have been writing in the English language and is, it is necessary to take note of these writings and bring them within the purview of English studies.